Hello, today's Bible study comes from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses uh, 14 through 16. And, it's, and it reads as follows. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, too, the Israel of God. Uh-oh. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Paul starts off and he says, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going on. Know the truth about this situation. And he says, right there in the beginning of it, he says, May I never boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is there to brag on except the cross? There's nothing else to brag on because we haven't done anything. And there was no glory or fame that comes from us teaching or sharing, um, and not from the riches, not from any of that, because it is all about the fact that Jesus went to the cross for us. Um, there is no st status, no accolades among men that put us higher than the cross. The cross and the glory of the cross, the sacrifice, and what God did and continues to do is what we should brag on. And it is hard because if you don't know what the crucifixion was, if you don't know who Jesus is, and if you're tied up in this fleshly world, you think of self. But if you know who he is, and if you know what was done, you think of his selflessness. Where we get selfish, he has been selfless. He left glory and perfection. He left no faults of his own. He died for people who didn't even care about him out of his love for people. If you want to talk about love, this is it. If you want to talk about compassion, this is it. If you want to talk about kindness, this is it. If you want to talk about righteous, this is it. This is what you can brag on. Because anything that you, you brag on about man, it has a time frame. That car, it rusts, it dies, it decays. That house, it falls down. How you look, them looks go to the wayside. How you feel, it go from good to bad and then death. All of those things go away. That sacrifice that Jesus Christ gave was for eternal life, for an opportunity at eternal life for salvation. And that goes on forever and ever. By whom the world had been crucified to me and I to the world. And Paul here is speaking about, I gave up this flesh. I gave up the things of the world is what he's saying. The flesh had its own thoughts, its own ways, its own passions and desires, its own urges. And Paul told us that the the flesh and the spirit are constantly at war. Well, Paul said, I gave up the flesh. I don't have to worry about having that war because I gave it up. And the flesh on the cross, Jesus gave us flesh and he put us on the cross with him. And Paul, Paul says, hey, my flesh is on the cross, and the world is with it, and I am now, not of the world, I am dead to this world. Paul was saying the world would not have anything over me. There was no influence that was going to happen to Paul, especially if it was dead. And, and Paul said, hey, I can't respond to any influence if I'm dead to the world. 
So, Paul was saying, hey, I love the Lord, is what he's saying. And he was saying he was dead to sin. Paul was saying, I don't want the sinful nature when he says the word. I don't want to be with sin. I'm dead to sin. I am going towards God. Sin is not the direction I'm going. And then he says, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but a new creation. Paul is just saying right here, we as Christians have been given standards to live by. But the problem is, did we become a new creation when we accepted Jesus Christ? You don't need to have your foreskin cut or uncut as we like to see that physical thing. Because you could still not have Christ. Christ is looking for a new circumcision in how you are. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for that new creation. And we can't do the new creation by ourselves. God changes us. When his Holy Spirit enters us, God does it. And it's not something that we can do. And remember, we are under grace. Remember, the law was our performance. Grace and mercy is God's performance. So it's grace is, is God. So it's how God performs in us, how he changes us. We cannot do it. Then he says, and as many as walk according to this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. So as many as walk according to this rule, this rule is what he's talking about. There, the rule for the Christian life, the way we were supposed to live and the way we are to live is in God's word. Read the Bible in short. It, it's not something I knew before I knew the Lord. I had to read the Bible. You have to study the Bible. And then we measure or look at how we stand up against this rule. The Bible helps us fit and meet God's standards. It reveals them to us. And peace and mercy be upon them. And, and this, is, this is awesome. Because... Because you remember, Paul was after these legalists, the ones with the false doctrines. But if you're walking with the Lord, Paul says, peace and mercy be upon him, upon them. And he tells you who it is. And upon the Israel of God. These are the people that truly believe in the Israel of God. Abraham's people. And their activity was measured according to faith. You were a child of Abraham, an heir with Abraham by faith. And Paul lets them know that. Amen.